The periodontal ligament fibers are our nemesis when we're trying to take teeth out. Basically, the goal of every extraction is to overcome these fibers and basically deliver the tooth from the bony socket. Now, there's a variety of ways to do that, and we're going to learn how to do it in our future videos. This video, basically the goal of it is to teach you a bit about the PDL fibers and the periodontal ligament space in order to give you a clearer understanding of why we use the techniques that we do when we're taking teeth out and why we use our instruments the way that we do and apply the forces that we do when we're extracting teeth. So without further ado, let's get into the PDL space. So the PDL space is usually an hourglass type shape. So it gets wider at the apex, narrower in the middle portion of the root and wider towards the coronal portion of that root. At the narrowest constriction, it's about 0.15 millimeters. At the widest point, it's about 0.38 millimeters. Now I always get a kick out of it when dentists say, I'm gonna use my 301 elevator and I'm gonna just try to work it down the PDL space and get uh, that tooth luxated out of there. Well, it's kind of analogous to pushing a baseball bat down a crack in the sidewalk. You've got a 0.3 millimeter PDL space and you've got a three millimeter elevator that you're trying to put in it. Now, basically you're just grinding away the bone or kind of destroying the bone as you're getting deeper on the tooth. You're not actually using the instrument with the function it was designed for. So if you're trying to get into the PDL space, there's instruments for that, like your periatomes, your luxators, your luxating hybrids. We're gonna get into all that later on, but we're gonna to try to understand why we're using those instruments for certain situations and we're gonna be employing them correctly, which is gonna facilitate the extractions that we do. Now, the PDL fibers themselves have the function of supporting the tooth. They're also a fiber that allows for some sensory information to be passed to the body. They also are responsible for remodeling the bone around the teeth, and they have a nutritive function as well. So these are very important fibers, and we often don't think much about this space. The space itself, of course, surrounds the root in 360 degrees, all the way up and it's basically connected from the cementum to the alveolar bone adjacent to the tooth. Now, without further ado, we'll look at the types of fibers and basically where they attach. So let's look back here at this lower second premolar. We have first here the transeptal fibers that run between the teeth. So you're gonna have a connection from this tooth to this first molar and from the second premolar to the first premolar. So those are connected up at this level here, right at the cementum. There are also fibers that run circumferentially around the tooth and connect to the alveolar crest of bone, which are the alveolar crest fibers. Good name, hey? So uh, next one down would be the horizontal fibers. And those are extending down below the crest a little ways. Now this here, we'll stop here for a minute. When we understand that, there's six types of fibers. We've already covered three of them and we're about right here. So we have instruments that can reach to this level for sure. And we're gonna get into those again down the road. But wouldn't it be easier to take this tooth out if we use some instruments in the appropriate manner to sever the fibers down to this level to where we only have about you know, a half the root left or two thirds of the root left that's still connected to the bone. Well, one of the functions of this periosteal elevator or say a 15 scalpel blade would be to go all the way down to the bone circumferentially around the tooth to release the gingiva and sever some of those crestal fibers. That is at the start of every extraction that you do. Next thing would be to use maybe a periatome or a luxator, something that you can work down the root in a uh, on the long axis of the tooth to get down and sever the horizontal fibers. And you've already done half your job just by doing this simple step at the very beginning. Moving on from there, we're gonna get into the oblique fibers, which are as they sound, they run in an oblique fashion, either uh, vertically uh, up toward the occlusion or away from the occlusion down toward the apex of the tooth. As you roll around the tooth here and get out of that middle portion, you're gonna get into the apical fibers which surround the apex of the tooth. And then if we look at a multi-rooted tooth, for example, we've also got interradicular fibers that are anchoring those roots to this bony septum. So we need to really consider this and have that image in our mind when we're trying to remove a tooth. So we're trying to overcome those fibers and we're gonna be luxating and using our forceps and buccolingual motions, rotational motions. The goal is to expand the bone and rip that ligament, tear the ligament and get the tooth out. 
When you start to see bleeding coming from that periodontal ligament space, this is a terrific sign. It means that you're starting to overcome the hydrostatic pressures within that socket. You're tearing the ligament, which is causing the bleeding, and you are winning. You're going to be there after a few more movements of that forcep. That tooth should deliver without complication.